Hi my lovely Lego addict and welcome to a review of the medieval pier inn. Now for the longer term viewers of this channel you will know that I've actually already reviewed a set from this brand called Lakeside Lodge and um, if you're interested in that review there is a card above you can check it out. I found that a really interesting and mixed bag so do check that out if you're interested to see my opinion on that. Also for full transparency this set was sent to me by Etho themselves for free all the opinions in this video are my own. I'm not being paid for this review. I've just been sent the set. Also, when the FO reached out to me to ask if I wanted to review another set, I was initially actually pretty skeptical and I wasn't sure if I wanted to. I reviewed the Lakeside Lodge because I was really curious about alternative brick companies and really just wanted to give a set a try and that seemed a really good way to do that. I just wasn't really sure if this brand was going to give me a different experience the only reason I ended up actually saying yes is because FO assured me that I'd taken my feedback on board and had actually made changes. When I saw the pictures of this set when it was being produced, I noticed straight away that the base was made out of plates and not made out of bricks, which if you've seen the previous review, you will know that that was my initial problem. I therefore basically decided, you know what, I'll give this another try because if that main step of attaching all these large pieces is removed, the build will be way more enjoyable. And also I saw the design and come on, it looks pretty amazing. So before we dive into the specific categories, there's a few main things you need to know. So this is the Medieval Pier Inn and it contains 2143 pieces as well as an Alight Kit to light the whole set up. The Alight Kits are one of FO's main differentiators and kind of their selling points. Their whole slogan is that they've designed sets for day and night. So the lights form a very critical part of their branding and therefore we will be reviewing the Alight Kit itself in this review as well. Now we get to the interesting part. This set retails for $139.99 US dollars without shipping or taxes. But for those of us in the UK and in Europe, our taxes are actually calculated in the main retail price. So on Amazon UK, this set retails for $159.99 and in Europe, it's going to retail for $174.99 or $179.99. Final price has not yet been determined. The price at that level indicates two things to me. Basically one, FO is not a cheap alternative to Lego. It's its own thing. And two, it's not cheap to make brick sets. However, at this price range, and I'm specifically going to compare it to UK prices because obviously I'm in the UK, so that's what I would expect to compare it to. This is the same price as Lego's A-frame cabin. The A-frame cabin actually has 2,082 pieces. So this set is only like 61 pieces more, but it obviously also has a light kit. Having set that stage, we now know that we need to see that a different option to Lego. It's just not a cheap alternative. Hopefully that allows you to reframe your mind and look at the set in a different way. So we can kind of go through all the different categories that I've got and really look at this and see if it's worth the price and if it's right for you. So starting with design, I wanted to put this category up front because honestly, the design of the set is what drew me to it. Really different looking to anything I have seen from Lego or from other companies. And I really feel that this just jumps out as fantasy, medieval, like it has such a cool vibe to it. It's such a nice building. The fact that it's such a beautiful building as well as something else that really attracted me to it because I love my buildings, as you know. I think this like would not be out of place in like a D&D &D campaign. It's like a centerpiece. There are just like details everywhere. Like the interiors are just chuck full of details, which is something that I actually commented on in the Lakeside Lodge as well. And it's something that I really like. There is just so much life going on. In fact, when you open the instruction book, one of the first thing you can come across is like a, a massive concept art picture and a little description of like setting the scene or inspiration. And I read that and now providing there was a few spelling mistakes in that, it really made me so excited for the build. In fact, don't just take my word for it. Here is a demonstration. Come to a peaceful medieval village and get rid of modern life. Peer in beside the sea is transformed for an old sailing ship. Ships and carriages come in an endless stream. The inn sells fish and has all kinds of department stores. The basement of the inn is used to store barrels and sundries. The first floor is used to provide dining and entertainment services for guests. And the second floor is used as a temporary residence of the winery and the boss. When night falls, with the smell of fish on the sea breeze, the boss serves delicious drinks and foods for customers. And tired travelers fill their stomachs here. Bards were immersed in improvisation. 
Fishermen bought rich goods to trade and talk, with food sizzling on the grill. They all sat lazily at a wide wooden table, beside which the mellow wine and fresh beer were waiting for you to taste. Come on, that just got me so excited to build a set. It really just, I don't know, I could picture in my mind, I could smell the wine, I could just, it, I was there basically. So I really was excited to build this set based on that description alone. And that's something that I thought really had to be celebrated because they did a really good job with that. Yes, they should have probably gotten somebody to proofread it, but it was still really nicely done. So for design, I really feel that, I really feel like this set looks unique. And, it's not, and it doesn't obviously lean on any existing Lego sets, which I feel like some alternative brick companies do. And I think the fact that this looks such a unique design really helps it um, become its own thing. And whomever designed this set, hats off to you. You've done an incredible job. This is really stunning. And honestly, it just jumps right off the screen. It's so magical. And I just want to like shrink down and walk through this. Having said all that, Let's have a look at the building techniques used to create this design and see if they stack up. Before I jump into the building techniques, I really just wanted to put one disclaimer out there. This was the first set I built after Rivendell and um, Rivendell is legitimately the best build I have done forever. It's my favourite Lego set. I think any set that I build straight after Rivendell would really suffer in comparison. I felt like I was being quite harsh on a set but I had just come from such an ingenious build so I just wanted to put that out there. Basically this set had some really interesting building techniques but nothing that blew me out of the park in the same way that Rivendell did. There wasn't anything that was like oh my god I would never have been able to come up with this but it definitely still really was a fun build it just wasn't as elegant as Rivendell basically. <laughs> this is something I've also addressed in my Lakeside Lodge review but basically FO being an alternative brick company really means that the bricks have a slightly different clutch power to what you're used to from the leading brand. The bricks, though feeling really nice quality, they just have a slightly harsher clutch power, which you don't really notice with the small elements, but especially with the bigger elements, you do notice that that's slightly harder to put together. The bricks for this company also seem slightly more flexible. Also, as I was building this, I found that there was just a few minor stability issues. Nothing like detrimental or things would fall apart, but just a few moments where I was like, this would have really benefited from an extra layer of stability or plates to kind of strengthen this piece. What I mean with stability issues is there was just a few places where the bricks that you were building on top of had not been strengthened in a sufficient manner. So when you were trying to put bricks on top of it, they would kind of flex to the bottom and you'd have to kind of support it from underneath as well as from the top in order to like clutch things together. So this was especially noticeable when I built the base. The base is like a really large plate base, which was way easier to build, by the way, than the base for the Lakeside Lodge. So yay. But there was just a few places where I was like, it could have really done for an extra amount of bricks here just to make sure that the plates don't bend down too much when you put stuff on top. More so when you start building the pier area with the floor for the, for the inn itself, because that was sometimes only supported in the corners, because it's a 16 by 16 plate, the flex on it just was quite big when you push down to attach bricks and you had to just hold it from below to counteract that. Again, this wasn't like detrimental, oh no, I can't build this, but it was noticeable and it was something that I just was like, this could have just been avoided by just having a little bit of extra stability there. During the build, there was also a few small bits where I was like, oh, actually, if you added another plate here, that would have been a bit more stable. This build could have really done with an extra level of product testing where this would have been sent out to a few people that could have built it, given feedback on the bits where they thought, you know, more stability and slight enhancement or slightly changing the instructions would have helped just for clarity, just for like making things easy to build, that kind of stuff. It just felt like it was one step away from being perfect, basically. These stability issues kind of continued and kind of came to a head with the first floor or the second floor, depending on how you want to count. Effectively, what you had to do is you build that separately, obviously not with the roof attached, the roof came later, but you build that roof, the, the floor separately, and then you attached it to the building itself. Well, then actually attaching it to the main building instead of being really satisfying slotting in it was actually a little bit tricky 
I have a clip of this because Ollie had to do that and ever since that moment where I was like oh god like it's not quite why is it not going together and that's not really what you wanted to have I think Lego is really good at having those really satisfying moments where things just slot together and I think coming from Rivendell there was so there was quite a few of those moments so that is what I'm comparing it to and that's what I missed with this set in a few places. There's also one more thing specifically that I need to mention because it was such an obvious little problem that would have been able to be ironed out had this been product tested better. There was a basically a really lovely piece of furniture with like a croissant on the top it was like a sideboard. Basically when you build that in real bricks it was marginally, honestly, like a marginal bit of a millimetre too thick because of the way that it came together and it stretched the plates underneath it just so that it was bending out. This build, as you can see, is really just under stress. And I looked at this build and I was like, this feels like something that you would build on Studio. On Studio, it would, would look perfect. But then when you build that in real bricks, it doesn't quite. And I had such a strong suspicion that I actually went to try it out in Studio to see if I was right. And if you build this exact build in Studio, it does indeed work perfectly. And this is, I think, a lesson that any of us learn when you build on Studder.io. You need to build things in real bricks to test out if they actually work, because sometimes they don't, even though they look like they should on Studio. And that kind of made me think, has this whole set been designed on Studio? Which would make a lot of sense because it's free software. So if you wanted to create a product quite easily with stuff already available, Studio would be a great way. So the biggest actual issue that I came across for clutch power in the set was there was a wheel. You needed to attach two clips to a bar and one of them refused to go on. It was just too tight on the bar and we ended up having to resort to pressing it against something metal and then we're pushing down with all our power to get it in the middle to attach and honestly had this not been for a review I probably would have just left it off because that was such a faff but also that was genuinely like the worst thing that happened during this set. That was definitely more like an exception and not at all a rule but I still feel like I had to mention it because it was really difficult. All right so having touched on those negative points there are a few things that were really nice and I really enjoyed doing the build. I'm obviously highlighting the extra negative and extra positive things but overall this was a really fun build. Some of my particular favorites were the awning which you can see really here that was a really fun little build. It's really pretty. The other really fun build was this wine barrel, the still thing up there. Really liked that. That was really clever. There was quite a few little clever builds and there's a good use of clips and bars and things in this set in order to like create nice angles. Though similar to the Lakeside Lodge as well, the roof. I just really like the way they make their roofs. They look really good. They look a bit weathered but I really like the technique they use so again that was really nice so overall the build was really fun there was loads of beautiful detail and it really came together and lived up to that inspiration promise that we had at the start but it could have just done with a slight bit more product testing just to make sure that everything in the instructions was correct and everything worked as intended so now for the quality segment and even for lego i have quite a bit to say about this as you would have known from my Rivenel review so there is no surprises here that I have some pointers and thoughts and concerns about this set. So obviously there's already a few things that I've mentioned, like the clutch power, like some of the things being under stress, but there's also just a few new things. So the stickers, which it's hard to call them stickers because they're really more like transfers, are still transfers. They haven't changed from the Lakeside Lodge. And I kind of mentioned that I didn't really like them in the Lakeside Lodge and I found them difficult to attach because the stickers with the transfer on it are bigger than the brick and it's kind of hard to line them up and once you've committed there's absolutely no way you can try again because you'll just break whatever you put on however that's my opinion i built this with my mate ollie who have lived here now and he actually said that he quite liked the transfers and he found that lining them up was easier and it looked really good and i have to agree with him actually once you attach the transfer onto the bricks they do look really nice and because they're not like stickers the background is just a brick and there aren't really like obvious edges in general they just look kind of nice so the bricks in general actually have really good pigmentation they match the lego colors really really well and they feel like a really nice quality this set does not feel cheap they are lovely bricks and attaching them in general is really easy the only obviously massively noticeable difference is that none of the studs say lego because it's an off-brand product this set was also chock full of pieces in colors that we've never seen from Lego before and it was amazing. There's just some really, really cool recolors. I think my main ones that I want to mention that especially stood out to me 
is there was a carp and like some cut like not cutlery but like some bowls and things on the tables in the tavern that are like dark bluish gray and reddish brown and they look amazing and i really wish we had loads of them because they are perfect for medieval taverns and i need 20. if this set was released by lego in these colors people would lose their minds just for the recolors alone so i feel like they've used that opportunity of recoloring things in the color that they want really well it honestly feels like they gave somebody a brief design something in studio you can make anything in any color it doesn't matter if it exists and they took full advantage of that there is one thing that i did want to mention though about a brick color there is a white or off-white piece in this set mostly used for the awning but also some of the masonry in the build and i can't figure out if it's meant to be white or not basically it's not white it's sort of like a weird off-whitish thing but regardless of what color it needs to be the actual brick is like quite milky and translucent it's sort of really hard to describe but, and it doesn't show up on like camera as well as it does in real life but especially compared to like the tan it looks sort of like blurred on the edges and compared to how perfect all the other colors are i really feel like that color the pigmentation just wasn't quite right i hope that they'll fix something like that because there it just it's just really weird it just doesn't seem quite right when you have it in your hand it doesn't feel very solid and all of that seems to make no sense when i say it out loud but it does when you hold the piece so obviously we've already touched on some of the clutch and flexibility issues with this set that can probably go under quality as well but there's no more detail needed because i'll just be repeating myself from the building technique section so overall i think the quality in the set is really great but because of the price point that we're at we are literally comparing it like for like to the leading brand and i feel like there is a few too many issues to there's definitely some easy to fix things like an extra round of product testing to make it more stable and also fixing the white all right because this set obviously prides itself on the light kits and that, that being their main selling feature and differentiator I just really wanted to touch on the lights in this set. Now, if you've never installed lights before, this is a really nice set to get used to installing light kits because basically the instructions allow you to install the light kits as you go along in a really clear way. And there are some really good things that make it really easy. Um, again, because Ollie built this with me and he's never installed a light kit before or built an off-brand Lego set, he said that actually installing the light kit was really quite straightforward and really well explained. Because this set comes with strings of lights, you can't actually change the lights that they provide. As you know, I'm not the biggest fan of colored lights and that was initially a concern for me. However, the green lights have won me over. I think they're really nice. You can't really see them currently with the lights on. So if I just turn it off, you can kind of see them making it look more seaweedy and exciting. Um, it's more balanced on the other side. There was a, there's a green light here as well. Just again interesting looking i think i'm pretty happy with the way that they laid out the lights i personally think that in general it looks lovely the only lights i probably personally would change is the light in the cellar i would probably make warm white and then this light for the fire i probably make orange i think it's way too red in my opinion and it's really rather bright that being said the lights do really make it look magical and i do really enjoy building with the lights on as well it was one of the things that swayed me for the lakeside lodge as well However, I do have to be honest with you guys. So I did have a few issues with the lights in this set. So basically I had some issues with the lights on the first floor in particular. They just kept on flickering or going off completely, which generally indicates to me that one of the cables is being like squished too much. So I tried finding out where that was like a point where they were being squished too much or so I could loosen it up and I just couldn't find it. And eventually like basically all of the bits where the cables are is now loose. So when you look at my set, there is just a lot of cables on the first floor because eventually I had to just loosen everything and now it seems to be more stable. I still think that the lights at the top floor aren't as bright as they could be and not all of them are working as much as I want to. I wasn't really sure if I wanted to include that because obviously there could be huge error. So there's also a really cool brick included in this set in the bags for the lights, which basically have a little canal at the bottom of them so you could put you could pass the cables through them really easily. I've not had this in any of the other like light kits that I've bought, and honestly it made installing and hiding cables or at least passing cables through things so much easier. So I'm really happy about those. So they're they were a great addition. Overall, they just add a lot of ambience, and I do really think it makes the set extra special when you build it. I mean, they make a big deal out of the lights, but they do make it really magical, and it's definitely a differentiator. So I can give them that at least. That's just a few really quick things that I wanted to mention. 
basically um this set comes with minifigures the lakeside lodge didn't they had their own design oh my goodness i have to show you that's so funny i have to say at least they don't look completely cursed because i have seen some and they are terrifying i think they have a sort of cuteness to them i don't know if it fits the aesthetic of the set in that way but they're kind of all right. Obviously you can tell the hair models are actually the same as Legos. These are like really adorable. And then this one, just look at him. He looks like either he's not had a lot of sleep or he's um he's on something. Don't get me wrong. Obviously the minifigures reign supreme, but they're kind of adorable. They have something to them. Just looking at the set, I think this is a really nice set. It tells some stories. I love that it's like a cat chasing a mouse in a cellar. There's so many food details little interior details it feels really like dollhouse like but like in the best possible way a bit like the lakeside lodge set and the thing that i love so much about that one as well and it really does come together and so like the most fantastical magical fantasy set that i feel like i wish i had more of however i feel like i have to be honest through kind of exploring alternative brick companies and their products i've kind of noticed that the fact that lego holds its value really well is actually really important to me. I always know that it's something that I use to kind of justify some of my purchases, but I never knew how important it was to me until I had this set, because I can't get around the fact that it's very likely that when you buy this set for the price it goes for, if you want to resell it, you're gonna get half, maybe not even that, because there isn't really the market for it. Whereas with Lego, even if you like have just built it and something on you're still probably going to get three quarters of the price that you paid for it if not more and then when if you wait until it's retired you're just going to get the full asking price back pretty much because that is just how the value keeps for those sets and i find that it really helps me justify some of my purchases i'm not going to lie 160 pounds for this set is not something that i can just go and spend without thinking about it. I find it hard to kind of like wholeheartedly recommend a set like this to somebody when I know that I probably wouldn't have been able to justify this to myself. As I said at the start of this review, this company and these sets are not a cheap alternative to Lego. They are just a different type of set and a different company and they produce stuff that Lego doesn't. So it's kind of filling a different niche. And as much as I really think that's awesome and the stuff that they produce is actually genuinely really nice quality and looks really awesome and feels unique. I find it so much harder to justify just because of the value proposition. And in a way, I kind of feel bad because this set has been designed by somebody that is genuinely really good at designing. Look at it. It looks magical. But because of the price tag where they're at, it feels like a much harder sell than it could have been if it was cheaper. And the fact that I don't think I would spend my money on this set doesn't mean that this set is bad or anything like that. It's, however, everybody has different values and different ways to justify things to them. I think if you're a huge fantasy and pirate fan or if you have a DD campaign where this would come in handy or if you just like magical buildings this would be perfect for you it's a fun build it looks amazing especially on a shelf because it has the lights this is definitely a really nice set i genuinely really hope that this set and this brand finds the niche that it's looking for and really can exist because this set has generally had a talented designer work on it. I think that's all I have to say for this set. I hope you found this useful and I hope that you understand where I'm coming from. It's been a really interesting opportunity to review sets like this, but I don't think I'm planning on doing it anytime soon. And I will see you in the next video, my lovely Lego addicts. See you so soon. Stay well. Goodbye. Hado.